Welcome back everyone to another episode of Tyler's Fishing Post. In this video, we're going to be doing something a little different than like the normal videos. I'm going to be showing you guys how I edit my videos and specifically the B-roll segment. So today guys, I'm going to show you how you can create this. Yeah guys, wasn't that pretty cool? If you're interested on wondering how you can make that video yourself, I actually put a link in the description, I think. I'm not sure if I could do it yet. I'm actually uploading the, the footage now on the internet. And hopefully you guys can go download the footage. There might be a link in the top of the description. You guys can just click on it and download all the footage. All you will need for this tutorial is basically After Effects. So basically a computer with the program called After Effects. So it's Adobe After Effects. You want to go download it. And yeah, that's all you need. If you want to post this video on social media, you actually might need Epidemic Sound to have the rights to the song because the song I am using is owned by Epidemic Sound. And yeah, that's pretty much how I start uh, my videos. The first thing I do is I go on Epidemic Sound. Here, I'll pull it up for you really quick. So guys, this is basically Epidemic Sound. This is what it looks like. And you can basically go in here and you can pick like the moods, the movement, the places. All that stuff, they also have a bunch of sound effects. I'm not sponsored by Epidemic Sound. I would love to be though. So Epidemic Sound, if you're watching this, hopefully you are watching this, please sponsor me. But anyway guys, Epidemic Sound is the best. I really, they make it really easy for you to find the best music. And I mean, it's only 15 bucks a month. So I mean, it's like, I mean, a little free plug there. Anyway guys, if you're following along, it's rec like, I would recommend you having a fast, a somewhat fast computer. Personally, when I started doing videos, I had the slowest computer ever, but now I have a MacBook Pro, so it is definitely like sped up the process on how I make the B-roll stuff, and I have also been able to do a lot more because of a faster computer, as where my slow computer cannot do some of the stuff that we're about to do. So, just want to recommend you guys, if you have a fast computer, use it for this. So this is what After Effects looks like, this is the whole video. Yeah, that's the whole video, and... I'm basically going to break down how you would make something like this. So first off, what I would do is I would just go to Epidemic Sound, like I just showed you guys, and I would pick a song, I would listen to it, listen to the beats, listen to every little detail in the song, and be like, okay, is this what I want? Is this, like, is it cinematic? And there's different styles of, like, B-roll. You know, like you have the really fast beats, fast songs, and it's going to be a really fast B-roll segment. But for this, I've had, like, three time lapses in this little segment, so I want it to be really cinematic, nice and smooth, motions and stuff all that good stuff so let's open up a new project let's go new new project and bam this is what after effects is going to look like absolutely nothing in it and i'm going to go over and grab my footage so the first thing we're going to go to is the park we have a few time lapses and yeah i kind of messed up the time lapses when i was doing them so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drag them and drop them in over there and i do a lot of stuff to this footage like it's not, it does not look as good as like, you'll see. If you download the footage, you're gonna be like, oh, it's a lot of stuff goes on when editing this stuff. So first I have my first clip of footage right here. And let me actually go grab the song. Okay, so I have the song down here. I'm actually just gonna lock it. You can do that by clicking on this little lock button. That'll basically 
meaning you can't move it, you can't do anything to it, it is locked. So first off, I have this time lapse, and actually what I need to do, as you, okay, let me get into this. So I have this time lapse here, and I kind of messed up, okay? As it goes on and on, I really, I messed up, because look at that, it's super overexposed, and that's the sunrise. That is the sunrise. It's not supposed to be that bright. And look at how bright it gets. Look at that. Look at how bright that gets. And that's in the morning. That's This is like 7 o'clock in the morning. So what I did there, I was I messed up the time lapse. I basically, you have to set the exposure super, super low. That way when the sun comes up, it's nice and bright. And it basically goes from being really, really dark to really, really bright. And this was on the EOS R. And fortunately, I had the M50 with me. So what I did was, it was pretty funny. I just... Let me drop it in here, and you can actually hide the footage by, let me unlock this and drag it down. You can hide the clip that you're looking at, because as you can see, it's basically stacked up. So whatever, on, whatever is on the top is what you're going to be seeing. So if you drag in footage and like, oh, how come I'm seeing this? So what you can do is you can just hide this right here, and you'll see what's underneath it, or you can just hit this little button, which will like solo it, which is, if I click right there, that little icon is basically mean that clip is the only thing that's going to be playing. If there's audio, it's going to be playing audio. If there's no audio, it's not going to be playing audio. So that's, yeah, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in these programs. So anyway, what I had to do was I had to set the M50 on like my bag. I didn't have a try. I didn't have a second tripod for it. So I basically set up the time lapse mode really quickly because I realized that the EOS R time lapse was going to fail. But see, look at that shot. It still looks good. Still looks good, but we have a lot of stuff to do with it. And I'm talking way too much, guys. I'm sorry. Let me just jump into it. Uh, okay. Let's try this. Okay, guys. So, I'm sorry. I'm talking way too much here. But I'm actually just going to go back, open the project. Sorry, this is confusing. I'm going to open the B-roll project and just show you. I'm not going to recreate it. I know a lot of other tutorials are basically recreating it because they'll create the b-roll or whatever the segment that they're going to show you how to edit and then they're just going to do it over again and explain how you do it but it will take way too long because i'm going to try to explain every little thing along the way so let me just jump into this stuff and show you how it's done so first shot here we have the time lapse so what you want to do is you want to go in and you want to find that first little bit so i wanted to save the eosr time lapse footage basically i didn't want to just like Put it aside and be like, oh, it's it's wasted. But I actually really liked it. I really liked the nice oranges and kind of like purple in there. I really liked that, so I wanted to keep that. What I have here is you can see I have scale on. So let me close these so it's not distracting. So I'm going to select this piece of footage that I want, and I'm going to go in here, click on that little arrow, and what you're going to see is when you do that, the transform right there, you're just going to go down and transform and go scale. So I want to start out at 100 and I want to slowly just nice and smooth, just zoom in. So I have it set to 100 here. So if I actually delete these keyframes, I can go, so let me delete these and show you how it's done. So I'm going to select this thing right here. That's going to make a keyframe for scale. And I'm going to go all the way to the end. And you actually go a little bit past it if you want. I'm going to go, let's see, let's go to 120. Let's look at that. Okay, that's a little too fast. I want it nice and smooth. So let's actually, let's go down to 110. That's, that's a little better. I like that. It's just that gradual. So for this next shot, I have the second time lapse. It is in the file. I uh, labeled two time lapses. I labeled the first time lapse and second time lapse. Now it's easy for you guys to just drag and drop in there. And you're just going to want to find that little section that you want in there. And what you need to do is actually listen to the song a few times first and just kind of listen to it. So like, I wanted to keep the first few seconds in the first time lapse, so I'm going to listen to the song. Cut. That's how, it's, that's how you want to do it. Also the beats, the same way. When you hear like the rhythm, the beat, cut, cut on the beats. So you just gotta get that little rhythm going. If you're into music and you, you listen to a lot of music and stuff, you might know the rhythms and stuff. Builds up, cut. So that's basically how you would want to cut. You just wouldn't want to cut like 
just cut in the middle and then it's just like oh that's confusing you want it to nice and smooth just like nice understand like <laughs> I'm sorry if this is confusing you guys and uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video I just wanted to try something new and yeah so for this next shot we're gonna go to scale and we're gonna turn on 100% actually no let's not do that because it was somewhat crooked and I had to rotate it so let's go down all the way okay so let's start out the scale 126 so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go all the way to the end of the clip and like that and we're just gonna slowly come in so let's go 140 actually and then I don't yeah that actually looks good let's look at this so it's just yeah you see that just nice and smooth movement coming in and then this shot did get overexposed so what I did with this is you can go over to effects and presets and you can just type in Lumetri color right here under color correction and I'm just gonna drag this right on top of the footage I actually already have the effect on there so that's what you would do and then just tap this little arrow it's gonna go down basic correction and then you want to go underneath tone and then you have highlights so let me reset this so it's completely no effects are on so I noticed once it started getting really bright yeah see I was right in the sidewalk and these people walked right in front of it I was like ah oh, but sometimes that happens so highlights I'm gonna grab this little slider here and this actually changes like the highlights and the brightness and if I drag it all the way down it's not as overexposed as if it's like on zero right here drag it all the way down and that actually looks a little better you got those nice oranges in there and that's with it off that's with it on so what I did was I instead of just it being like this I still want some highlights in there because see at zero you still have like these nice colors in there so I want to keep like those highlights in there so as soon as the Sun comes up I'm gonna set a keyframe for highlights and go to the end of the clip and I'm gonna set highlights to negative 100 and that actually fixes that so it's gonna gradually just bring the highlights down so yeah first two shots are done let's move on <laughs> so next shot we have is right right in the rhythm let's actually listen to the song let me turn it up let's just see what we have so far of course you're gonna want to have this fade in so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the first clip because you don't want it to just be like bam it's there you want like for a nice smooth b-roll something you want to just like nice fade in and there's effects in premiere pro if you have that program because you can do most of this stuff in premiere pro but some of the like complicated transitions i like to do in after effects so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hit t on my keyboard for opacity and i'm going to select the keyframe right there and i'm going to go forward at least a second and then i'm going to go 100 make sure it's zero for the first keyframe and 100 for the second and now you have this nice slow you actually make it a little bit longer but we only have a few seconds for this little clip so nice and easy looks good right. yep see if this if the computer is slow it's going to kind of do that sometimes but yeah I don't, I'm tough. well guys here's a quick tip for you i'm sorry i'm kind of jumping around in this video but i was actually having some problems filming this video and editing this video so it is definitely a lot. I've never done a video like this. I hope I'm doing okay. Please like the video if you think I'm doing okay. And if you want to see another video just like this, I will actually show you how I edit the intro for this video, where basically I'll show you how you can like give yourself pitch black eyes and you can like move around with them. And it's going to be super cool if you guys want to see that or if you're interested in learning about that. Definitely smash a like and if this video gets 25 likes, I'll make a video explaining how I made that little intro and how I like changed my intro to look like that. So back into the video, a quick tip for you is if your computer is really slow, go over to this little box right here where it says resolution down, sample factor or whatever. And basically full means it's going to play back at full resolution of the video. And that's like going to be really hard on your computer because it's going to try and play the full quality of the video. And it might sound like this. 
the song will slow down and it'll try to process the video and it won't sound great and it'll be very hard to find the rhythm and the beat to cut so basically you're going to want to go all the way down to quarter and that should definitely help it and it should be able to play it back like that and see yeah so that's basically what you do there and we've actually already went through these two shots and how you do these and you can actually color grade them how you want in Lumetri color. You can go over here, you can play with the exposure on the like the brightness on how exposed they are, and you can do a lot of stuff in Lumetri color if you want to play around with it. So yes, let's move on to the next shot. So this shot right here, I'm not sure if I'm gonna I'm actually not gonna discuss how I filmed it. If you want to see a video like that, comment down below if you want to see a video on how I film these videos but this video is mainly going to be how I edit them. So there is a lot of stuff that goes into this shot right here specifically. So when I'm filming, I film this shot handheld. I do have a gimbal behind me that is right there. Yeah, that thing right there, that little black thing, that is a gimbal and that basically stabilizes your camera. And that's what I use for my shots. But in this situation, I did not have my gimbal with me. So how did I make the shot look so smooth handheld? Because I mean, that's that's pretty smooth. So there's a few things you can do. There is stabilization on the camera. I did use that. And it was still kind of shaky. If you downloaded the footage, I can't say downloaded, downloaded. If you downloaded the footage, you will see, wow, this shot is horrible. And you just have to play around with it. So first off, I pre-composed it a few times here and I'll explain what that is in a second. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add some effects to this basically just the lumetri color. I want to definitely color grade this because it looks okay that's the original shot. That is what it looks like. Let me put it on full so you guys can see exactly. So that shot right there is exactly what it looks like. So I'm going to turn back on lumetri color and that's yeah you can see the big difference in there and what I wanted to do with all these shots is I want to make it either like sunrise or sunset so everything's going to be like this little bit of orange in it so what I did mainly was I just raised the temperature up to uh, to 30 and that basically changes like warm or cold is it going to be cold does it look cold because that shot looks cold that's look that shot looks like you're freezing or I can make it look just a little bit warm so that's zero right there that's original shot right there so I'm gonna bump it up to 30 makes everything this nice orange color and of course I'm gonna bump the highlights down all the way and you'll see why because further on in this shot I come up like this sorry if the audio is bad from that but I come up like that and basically you see the Sun so if highlights were on zero bam super overexposed can't even see the Sun but now it definitely helps it doesn't it gives it some better colors because as you can see like around the edges of it there's some nice purples in there but if it's on zero you can't really see that so that's basically what I've done in uh, and I actually have added some contrast to it which on zero you basically just play around with all the stuff in Lumetri color and you can figure it out like basically turn up the contrast looks like that and I'm just gonna put it on I had it on 26 I think and just gives it a little bit of contrast. So that's what I did with that, and then I pre-composed it. So how do you do that? You basically right-click on it, and you go pre-compose, and you do that, and then what I like to do is, it'll say leave all attributes in that shot right there, but I would rather move the effects and all that stuff into the new pre-comp, which basically means when I pre-compose it, and I pre-compose it here, that Lumetri color is gone. It's not there anymore. It's in the pre-comp. So it's kind of like buried in the clip. It's not there anymore. So then, the best effect you have in After Effects has to be Warp Stabilizer. It can be your friend and it can be your enemy, because there is some times where I just want to take this computer and just throw it, because Warp Stabilizer does not work for me. So what Warp Stabilizer does is it basically is exactly what the name is. It stabilizes the image. It kind of warps it to stabilize it. And if it does not like the shot, it will tell you. So it's kind of hard to see, it did it a little bit in this shot, but when I panned up like this, I can get it to work. When I panned up like this, you can kind of see a little something. You can kind of see it like just a little something in the image. And you'll see if you add warp stabilizer to a shot and basically you just drop it on, you hit analyze and it will analyze the shots and it, it'll do that. And it'll basically probably take like 
the longer the shot, the longer it's going to take to analyze it. And once it stabilizes itself, it looks pretty good. And you can change the smoothness. You can go to zero, like there's no stabilization. Or you can go all the way up to 100, and it will be like 100% stabilized. But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You're just going to have to try it yourself. So then I pre-compose it from there. And so I have this shot. I pre-compose it. Let me get that to go away. And yeah, and that's pretty much it for this shot. There's actually one more thing I did this shot. I'm going to show you guys really quick. Go to time, and then, so basically what you're going to do is you're going to right click on the clip, you're going to go time, time stretch, and then 100%. That is the original time of the clip, 100%. If I go one, bam, it's the fastest time. You see that little clip? It went from there to there. Fastest clip right there. <laughs> so it was like fast, it condensed, it was just like, bam, it was like half a second. So what you can do is you can go time stretch and you can go 200. So that's slow motion. That's like going to be twice the length of it and it'll like really slow it down and it smoothens everything out a little bit and it just makes it look really smooth it's not just this quick like movement and it definitely helps what you have to do is you have to pre-compose it and then add warp stabilizer to it for it to work so let's move on to the next shot and there is a transition in between here because this is the last clip from the park yeah so that transition right there that's what it looks like and Basically, it's super easy to do. I do it all the time. When I figured out I could do it, I was like, man, this is so awesome. It looks amazing. It was a little tricky. So what you're going to want to do first is you're going to want to, let me actually turn you guys off right here. So first, you're going to open up a little tab here, go to transform, and you want to hit scale and rotation. And I like to do 20 or 30 frames. So I'm going to hit command and the right arrow, I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then bam, the next shot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go 90 degrees this way on rotation, so just 90, and then I'm gonna go to 150, zoom in. Hey guys, how's it going? Future Tyler here. I'm so sorry I messed up on the keyframes, okay? So both shots are gonna be moving out. So the first shot to move out, it's gonna move out from its original like 100%. So it needs to come out and not go in. So I said 150, I meant 50. I keep going on and on, but I didn't realize I made a mistake and said 150. So on the last keyframe, you need to go out 50. And then on the second clip, you're gonna be punched into 150 and then come out to 100, if that makes sense. So don't listen to what I just said, 150 on that keyframe, go 50 on the keyframe, okay? 50%, not 150. Okay, sorry, just thought I'd come in here and save you guys from messing up because of me. Because I was just like, oh yeah, 150, and then I didn't realize it's supposed to be 50 and not 150. So let's jump in, let's jump back into the video, actually. Let's, yeah, so let's jump right back in. Yeah, so then it looks like this. So then you're also wondering, why is there like this extra stuff in it? So if you go up here, there's motion tile on, that's the effect that's on. So that's the original shot, and motion tile makes it look really cool. So what you do, is I'm going to delete that, you go over to effects and presets, go type in motion tile, you can see it right there, motion tile. So I just dragged on motion tile, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go output width, and you want to turn that on 200, and then output height 200. And then the most important thing is you're going to want to mirror edges, because if it's not mirrored, or the edges aren't mirrored, you're going to see like this weird like line that divides all the images, because basically what it does so if I go scale and I actually back out, you can see it just basically multiplies that one image into a bunch. So if you go mirror edges, everything looks nice and smooth. And then what you're gonna wanna do is now that you have these keyframes, it's just, look at that, that was pretty boring. Like, it just went like, eh, kinda boring. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna want to make sure these stop right at the clip. You're gonna wanna highlight these and you're gonna wanna go F9 on your keyboard and then you're gonna come up here to the graph editor, click on that, and that's basically the keyframes on how fast they're moving, and as you can see, there's just this gradual slope of them doing their thing, moving. It's just this gradual movement. But what I want is I want a fast movement. I want it to be like, like this, and then bam, it's fast. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the scale thing, and you're gonna slide this over, and basically the line is how fast it's gonna move. So it's gonna slowly start to spin and then it's gonna spin fast so then I'm gonna do the same thing with rotation the exact same thing and you can adjust it how you want 
This is basically how I do it. And it makes it look nice. And it, yeah, that was a lot better because it just was like slowly and then bam. It makes the transition look a lot better. And then I did the exact same thing for this clip. I just did the opposite, if that makes sense. So basically what you're going to want to do is because this one, this clip right here, it went, it turned and it went out. So what you're going to want to do with the next clip is you're going to want to have it really, really tight and come out. So it's, this clip is moving out and so is the next clip. It's, they're both moving out. So I'm going to, I pre-composed the effect. So what I did was I put it on 150 scale and I had it back out to 100. And I did the same thing with rotation. I did negative 90 degrees and I had it rotate to zero degrees. So that's how you do that effect. Super easy. And I did the same thing with this clip. I color graded it, color corrected it, if you want to say. Uh, but yeah, I definitely need some LUTs for this. If you don't know what a LUT is, it's basically super easy. It's already like this color that you just add on to it. And it changes the shadows, the contrast, everything. And it's super easy. I need to make one. That way I'm not actually manually doing this. Because all these numbers, I change the contrast. That was the original. Like, that's what it looks like from contrast. I definitely, I bumped up the highlights because I wanted it to be a little bit brighter in those trees. And I did bump up the temperature from 0 to 20. That's what it looked like originally without the temperature bumped up. And that's what it looks like. Just this nice little orange color in there. And, yeah, I did motion tile, the same effects for that shot. So it looked the same. Nice and spin there. And then you're going to want to pick out the beats here to cut for the next few clips. Yeah, so if the computer is slow, it will do that. So basically, you kind of have to guess. Or you can scroll down to the very bottom of the song and you can go click on the little arrow down there, audio, waveform, and bam, you can see every little beat, everything that goes on in this song. And you can line it up perfectly the way you want it. So all these clips through here, I went in, I did right clicked on them, I went time, time stretch, and I bumped that up to 200 and that changed the length of it. I did it with all these clips just to slow it down and give it this nice movement because as you can see, this just nice slow gradual move down. And this clip right here and this clip are the exact same clip, it's just kind of cut up. So I had it, I was like moving through the trees like this and then I slowly came down and I have this, I have this nice movement because I was slowly moving forward and tilting the camera down so it's this nice movement. And then this tree, I did like several shots of this tree just kind of revolving around this tree and it's definitely some extra footage I can throw in there on those little like beats in the music, those little things that you hear. So if you just want to listen. Yeah. So it's definitely something nice, it definitely adds a little more to the video, and basically I did the exact same thing, I just color graded it, added 20% on the temperature, just bumped it up a little bit, and you can play around with lumetri color, you can do whatever you want to it, you can like completely change the colors, you can go in here to uh, curves, and you can do a lot of stuff, so definitely play around with it, and do whatever you want, it's definitely fun. So for these next few shots, the same thing, just time slow down slow down time and these next few shots I have moving forward like this so that's basically you can guess it I went to time time stretch and I went to one as you can see right there one and it's 0 0.20 of a second that makes sense so yeah and it just like super quickly it's only a few frames. It's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and I don't know that. So it's like 20 frames just moving quickly. Okay, so there was a problem with this shot. I got up here and it was super overexposed. It was on manual and I couldn't change it without it being all shaky. So I just kept on going. And what I did here, this shot, as you can see, has like this little blue stuff under it. So that means it is time reversed. So I click on time instead of clicking on time stretch, time reverse layers. That's exactly what I did here with these shots. So this whole one clip is basically me. And instead of moving forward, I was moving backwards. So I stuck the camera through these two beams right here. 
and I slowly moved backward and I went all the way back here and then what I did was I just time reversed it and you can do this with any clip just reverse the time and yeah I just slowed it down to 200% reverse the time did some color to it and uh, did it on the beats so I'll show you that Well guys, I am so sorry. I've had to change the C card like three times now because I'm shooting this video in 4K and it looks amazing because I can literally see all the stuff on my face. So it's just like awesome. So anyway guys, where was I? I'm so sorry about that. So we had this shot here and basically the exact same thing as the other shots. You're gonna want to, here let me turn off. You wanna go, so this is what you have. You have this shot right here. You wanna go down, you wanna hit rotation. That'll make a keyframe. Go over 20 frames. There's 20 frames right there. And we're gonna wanna go negative 90 degrees. The reason we have to go and hit F9 on the keyboard is that way easy ease them. So let me show you what that is like. That's without easy ease. We're in the graph editor here and it's just this straight line. So this transition is gonna be like, see that, that was just boring. That was just this movement just going, it wasn't that good. So what we have to do is we have to select the keyframes F9, that's the shortcut to easy ease the keyframes. And if you do not want to do that shortcut, you can actually just highlight them, right click on them, and select the keyframe assistant and go over to easy ease. Now we'll easy ease them like that. Go over to graph editor and then basically drag these little lines basically that will control the speed of the transition keyframes and stuff and you can do it however you want you can drag them like this so it will be a quick like right before the transition it'll look like this so you just like that straight just drop just like that that which is a cool looking transition you can do a lot of cool stuff with that or you can have it just drop in the middle where it will be really quickly like that in the move like that but in this case we want it to drop towards the end and just adjust it however you want, be creative. Beautiful, looks like that. So this next shot we have this drone footage and basically I went in and color graded it like so, warmed up the temperature, dropped the highlights. This is like, without the highlights, it's really, really bright. And unfortunately I shot this in the middle of the day. I was not able to fly the drone in the morning or later in the day where that golden hour is basically where you want to shoot either in the morning when the sun's coming up you got nice lighting or when the sun is setting you have nice lighting but this was in the middle of the day so this is what the original clip looks like bam super bright super like whoa that's a lot of light and it does not look like it was shot during golden hour so basically what I had to do was just kind of color grade it color correct it and make it look like it was in the morning which it looks okay it'll work basically so it does not look like it was in the morning like this shot would turn out in full like this because this looks like very early in the morning sun's first coming up but then this shot is basically like it's it does kind of look like it is in the morning so let's move on I uh, basically color graded it slowed it down I did not do warp stabilizer on this shot just because it was smooth enough for me. And there's no transition in between the other three shots. So you basically just need to find a proper time to just cut. And let's find that beat to cut. Yeah, so right there is where you want to cut to go to this next shot. And of course I did slow it down because you can see everything's moving really slow. Like you can see this car on the bridge right up in here is moving really slow. And yeah, so I did add warp stabilizer to this because this was, I think I was using the gimbal with this, but I wanted to make sure it's like extra stabilized and it looked nice and smooth. And warp stabilizer will crop in a little bit just so it can like stabilize the image. So we'll probably crop in like, probably where my hands are right now if I were to crop in on this image. It would look a little bit like that. So when you use warp stabilizer, just keep in mind that it will crop once it is finished stabilizing. So yes, I pre-composed it and I color graded it, like all the other shots. And this was, 
This was over the Sarasota Bay. This is the Sarasota Bridge. And this shot after this is the time lapse over the Sarasota Bay. It looks really nice. I'm getting ahead of myself, sorry. But this is what it looks like originally. Super overexposed. I think it was like, I'm trying to think what time this was. I think this was like four or five. So it's kind of like during that golden hour, but it's still like, look at that. You go from this to that and that looks amazing. And basically the same thing, temperature. If the temperature was not turned up a little bit, it would look more like that. And basically what I did was drop the highlights. The highlights were off, it would look like that. So let me turn negative 100 for the highlights. And then the shadows, I dropped the shadows down a little bit. So shadows would be zero, it looked like that. But I went to like a negative 36 and made it look a little bit like that. Didn't add any contrast, just the temperature mainly. It looks like that, beautiful shot. Looks really nice. I do a lot of editing to these shots. So it's really hard to get a perfect shot to look like just perfect when you shoot it. You have to edit to make it look good. So let's move on to the next clip, find a proper time to cut. So right here, the song kind of just drops. Like it's kind of building up, but then it just drops. So it's like, okay, that's kind of weird in the song. I wouldn't really prefer that to be in the song, but it does slow the song down because we're winding down towards the end and it does slow the video down. So, so since it just drops like that, I basically just go to black just because it just drops. So you just want to go down to here. You see where the waveforms kind of drop and the song slows down right in there. And yeah, so right in there, Right, and this little section just drops. You can see this little hump right in here? It kind of builds up and then drops. So, what I did was, for this clip, click on T on your keyboard, and that'll open up Opacity. And I basically, so Opacity, if it was on, if you hit T on your keyboard, it would look like this. You want to click on the little keyframe for Opacity. Then I'll make a keyframe right there. And you want to go for probably just a few seconds. You want this to be a slow, gradual fade in. So I'm gonna go, I did this out of order actually. You wanna go zero for the first keyframe. You wanna go for a few seconds. So with that little like, that really high pitched thing kind of slowing down, you wanna line it up with that. And you can hear that stop like right in between here around 11 seconds. So I'm gonna go up to 100. And that'll be nice and it'll flow with the music. Let's watch it over. That lines up perfectly with it. And this is the sun setting over the Sarasota Bay. And it looks really nice. I did color grade it a little bit. And it's basically just the temperature. And that's pretty much it. I could actually lower the highlights. See what that looks like. That looks a little better. I don't know. That just looks a little too much. I kind of want it to be more like a real looking shot. So let's go to zero on the highlights just because I think that's a little too much. We still want those colors in there because if I go negative 100, look at the colors. Look at that. Like you just don't, all that orange around this kind of area kind of goes away and you can't really see that. So let's just go to 100 and that's, that's a lot better. So then to close this shot out, what I will do is if you have After Effects, you also might have Premiere Pro. So what I normally do is I export it from Premiere Pro or you can export it from Adobe and Adobe Media Encoder and do it like that and basically just the shot fades out and that's it. But if you guys did not know this was a bunch of stuff I filmed from vacation. I'm sorry I didn't say that in the beginning. That's kind of odd. I didn't say that in the beginning but it's kind of distracted by my mom taking over my channel. This little little distracting right there but Yes, the, all this stuff we filmed while we're on vacation at the beach. Super fun time. I wanted to film this at the beach with like the beach behind me. That would have looked awesome. But the lighting conditions did not really uh, allow that to really make that happen. I wanted that to happen, but it didn't happen. So doing it here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. And I'll be back next week for another episode of Tyler's Fishing Post. Fishing Post, not fishing edits, not like edits, B-roll, whatever. It's going to be a fishing video next week, I promise, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Anyway, guys, if you want to see a video on how I did the intro for that video, how I made the black eyes, how I changed my intro like that, 
and also how I was like talking to myself and I can also show you guys how you can talk to yourself and do like a little video of like you talking to yourself. I would do it, but it does take time. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please smash the like. If I can get 25 likes, I will do a video showing you guys how to do some cool stuff, cool editing tips and tricks. And if you want to see some different videos on how I film my videos, comment down below. And thank you guys. My phone just went off. And thank you guys so much if you watched this whole video. I appreciate you so much. Like you, that person, you know who you are, who have watched all the way to the end. I thank you so much because this must have been a super long video because I've been filming for like an hour. Thank you so much if you watched this whole thing. And let me actually, oh, I'm sorry. I forgot one thing. Okay, so let's go back into After Effects. Let me show you one thing. Okay, so there's a ton of stuff in here. I can't, I can't like say everything because it's just there's so much in here. But if you want it to look more natural, definitely turn on the motion blur right in here. This little like icon, you can like highlight all your clips and you can, not the song, I don't want to highlight the song. You can highlight all your clips and just hit, uh, just hit motion blur and then I'll turn on the motion blur, all that right in there, which is also this right in here. It'll make it look a little bit more natural. I have so many, so much stuff I could tell you guys. And if you're interested, definitely leave a comment down below and like this video. I thought about making a second channel, but I just do not have time for that to start a whole new channel. There's so much stuff you have to consider thinking about with like a new channel. You have to think about like the end card, new intro, just like you have to think about all this stuff. And I just do not have time to start a new channel. So I just thought I would upload a video like this on my channel, the original TFP <laughs> and see how you guys thought of it. I went over on Instagram and asked you guys if you wanted to see me do a video explaining how I edit my videos and 30 of you guys said you wanted to see a video. So, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something, and definitely go download footage and follow along with this video. And, yeah, let me know if you want to see another video. Thank you guys so much, and like always, if you like to subscribe, click right down in here. If you want to watch more videos, click right over in here, and I'll see you guys next week for another episode of Tyler's Fishing Post. And don't worry, guys, I will be fishing in the next video. I mean, unless this video gets thousands of views and you want to see another tutorial. But, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next week.